May the name of the Lord be glorified. Uh, I thank God for uh, one more privilege he has given me this morning to speak from his word. Uh, it's really a great privilege, you know, that the pandemic is everything, everything is going on and we don't have the provision to gather together in the assembly, but still God has given us a platform like this to worship and to share from the word. It's really a great privilege for us. And uh, as you all know that we are going through some turbulence for the past few years. <clears throat> I think it started all started in the end of uh, the December 2019 and it's still going on. It all started somewhere in China and now uh, we have uh, felt the presence all over the world. It all started with just one variant, the Chinese variant, but we have so many other variants like the South African variant, UK variant, and there are still more variants coming up and popping up here and there. So uh, when you look at all these things, uh, that is uh, one thing we can understand that uh, we need to look at this events uh, in two manners. Like we have to uh, look at a positive and a negative uh, manner because anything that happens, it has both a positive and negative impact upon the society. If you look upon the negative impact, we know that uh, so many people have uh, lost their lives, they have lost their job, and uh, they are going through a lot of difficulties and things like that. But on the other hand, if you see on the positive side, there are so many industries they have got a good time because of this pandemic, especially all this uh, online mediums like Zoom and the go to meetings and everybody, they never thought that their industry would pick up and make a rapid uh, exponential growth in a, such a short, short span of time. And we see their uh, stock price, everything has gone so high. And again, that is the same in the case of pharmaceutical companies where they are making huge money in uh, creating the vaccine for this virus and everyone is fighting to create Virus and uh, so I mean like create anti uh, 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 I mean we're trying to create vaccine for this uh, virus and uh, they're all making a good time. But when you look from the spiritual point of view, again we can see there is like two impacts, like negative and the positive impact it has made upon the spiritual uh, background. You know, uh, when you look at the negative impact, it is uh, obviously we cannot uh, gather together like the way we used to gather earlier. The assemblies we have to uh, uh, gather through all these online mediums and uh, we don't have enough freedom now. To go to the home and preach the gospel or a lot of windows have got closed especially for the gospel work and things like that because of the pandemic but on the other side <clears throat> if you look into the positive impact that is had upon the spiritual side is that uh, today now people have understood the importance of life uh, earlier people thought that they can live forever and they have the latest medical facilities which can you know keep them sustain can sustain them in this world but now people have understood that uh, life is very short a person who is very healthy today he can be uh, dead tomorrow. And uh, the, the medical facilities that we have, there is an outbreak somewhere, all the medical facilities, ventilators, and everything can get oh, uh, occupied within a fraction of days. Like within a day or two, all the medical facility can you know, get saturated. So this is a thing what people have uh, understood uh, because of this pandemic. So this can really help uh, in when we try to uh, share the gospel with people. Earlier when we talked to them about um, God about heaven, earth, and uh, like you know about uh, death. After uh, death, you have judgment and things like that. They used to think it like a fiction. Now people can understand that uh, when we ask them to take a decision to follow Christ, they come up with so, so many uh, reasons and they say that maybe not now. I can take a decision later. But now they can understand that uh, if you have to take a decision to follow Christ and uh, submit your life to Christ now, and now, now it is right now. It's the moment. There is no other moment that we can you know expect. Right now is the moment to submit yourself into God because uh, we know <clears throat> uh, Brother Billy Graham always used to uh, say this in his crusade that uh, uh, if you want to follow Christ and if you want to take a decision and if you want to submit your life to Christ, then do it right now because right now is the moment. There is no other moment that you can you know wait for that. If you want to do something, do it right now. And now people will uh, really understand the fact that anything, if you have to take a decision to follow God or anything, they have to do it right now because they don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. A person who is healthy today may not be there tomorrow. So that is the situation we are passing through. So uh, this means that um, in the future, when, when everything gets over and in the future, when we get opportunities to go outside and uh, preach the gospel or to share the gospel, I think, uh, uh, I think uh, we will have a great harvest in the coming days because it's quite easy for the people to understand and it's quite easy for us to make them understand because uh, and along if the Holy Spirit works on their mind, it will be a great harvest for us in the coming days. So uh, as believers, we have to prepare ourselves uh, right now, and we should have the word in our heart to uh, you know, plan for those things, you know, to uh, 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 share the gospel in the coming days, uh, to bring more disciples unto God, and 
bring more followers unto God and uh, uh, bring glory to his name. So uh, having said that, uh, uh, let's move on to my today's uh, subject. Uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, uh, we heard a subject from our dear brother Anson. Uh, he spoke about uh, the introduction. He spoke about the introduction to Christian uh, leadership by looking into the life of uh, uh, Nehemiah. So uh, today, I thought of just step down a bit and thought of uh, looking and focusing a little bit into discipleship. So today, my today's topic is going to be uh, introduction to Christian discipleship. And we're not going to look into anyone's life. We are going to just look into our own lives and find out where we are standing. And we are going to take some scripture verse as guidelines to find out uh, what type of disciple we are, how good are we in our discipleship with God. So when we talk about disciple, the first thing that comes in our mind is the 12 people who God chose to be his disciple. Uh, so we think that disciple are like, you know, the 12 people who always stayed close to God. They went wherever he went and uh, Christ was teaching so many things to them and they were learning so many things from Christ. So we feel like Christ was a team leader and these 12 people were like his team members. So this is what the first thing that comes in our mind as disciples because we call ourselves as believers or separated believers or we call ourselves as children because we have got the privilege to call him as Abba Father. So this is the terms that we use to uh, identify ourselves. But are we really a disciple of God? So as per the protocol, you know, if you want to find a meaning of a particular word like everyone does, you have to go back and look the meaning of that word in Greek or Latin. So I did exactly the same. I went and searched for the meaning of disciple in Greek and Latin. And I came to know that in Latin, a disciple means learner or to learn. So disciple means he is actually a learner and he is supposed to learn from his master. So Christ is going to teach something unto us and we are going to learn from him if we consider Christ as our, uh, 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 as our master or as our leader. So having said that, uh, when we try to learn, uh, there are so many things that we have to learn from Christ. You know, last week, uh, uh, John C. Brother was talking about how to learn the scriptures properly and interpret, uh, interpret it properly by using the Six Sigma techniques and things like that, you know. So obviously, we are trying a, a level best to learn so many things from scriptures. That is the reason why we have a Bible class every uh, Sunday, every, every week we have Bible class and we spend so much time to learn from the scriptures. So we can basically call ourselves as disciples because we are literally learning from the scripture. And we're also learning from what Jesus has told to us. So we can call ourselves as disciples. So today, this morning, as I'm going to look into some of these uh, aspects, I'm just going to you know, give you a short uh, index like what I'm going to look into. First thing is that I'm just going to look into the basic criteria that is required to be a disciple of God. And then we'll uh, look into some of the common mistakes that we make as a disciple. These mistakes are made you know, even without our knowledge. Uh, sometimes we make it deliberately, but some mistakes are made even without our knowledge. Some of the common mistakes that a disciple will make in his life. And then we'll look into uh, some of the factors like what it takes to be a good disciple of God. And last but not least, uh, we'll look into some of the responsibilities of a disciple, but there are so many responsibilities that has been entitled uh, for a, a disciple, but we're not going to look into everything because uh, we don't have enough time for that. So we'll be looking just one of the important uh, uh, responsibility that has been given to a disciple. So first, let's uh, turn our attention to uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So in this particular verse, uh, this is actually, I'm talking about the basic criteria that you that is required to be a disciple of God. So here we read about two important verses uh, Christ is quoting. That is, the first thing is come unto me, and then later he says, come after me, or learn from me. So as a disciple, first we need to come unto God. Uh, the basic criteria is that you have to accept him as your personal savior, and you have to acknowledge him as he is the leader or the master for your soul. So once when you submit yourself unto God, then that is what it means that you come unto me. And then we have to learn from him. And then it, 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 it takes you to, you know, then he asks us, ask us to come after, you know, come after me or like 
to follow him. This is what exactly a disciple is supposed to do. So we know that salvation came at free of cost, right? As even Shibu uncle was uh, sharing in a couple of weeks back, that salvation was free, but the cost paid to get the salvation was quite heavy because it required the blood of the lamb of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So same way over here, salvation is free, but to become a disciple, it's quite costly. So you can be, uh, uh, you can get saved because you're not paying any cost for the getting saved because all the cost has been paid by our God on the cross of Calvary. But to become a disciple of God, you have to pay a hefty cost in order to be his disciple. And, you know, uh, in Luke chapter 14, uh, verse 25 to 27, we read about that. You know, uh, it, it takes, uh, yeah, and it, 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 the way the Christ, you know, conveys the message for his, uh, uh, for the people, you know, in the crowd, it's quite, you know, straightforward that we can read in Luke chapter 14, verse 25 to 27. Luke chapter 14, or verse 25 to 27. Now, a large crowd were going along with him, and he heard and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes. And even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. So this is one of the basic criteria that Christ put in front of us to become his disciple. <clears throat> and we know that uh, he is not trying to make more followers. If he wanted to make more followers for him, his message won't be like this. His criteria won't be like this. It will be more like a user-friendly or sugar-coated uh, uh, criteria. But here we see his talking straightforward to the people. By this talk, I think most of the people would have, you know, left that place because, you know, in order to be a disciple, you have to hate your father, mother, and everything. So that is what the cost it takes to be a, a disciple. But, you know, again, there is a star mark put on my Bible which says that on, the, on top of the hate. Here, the hate doesn't mean that, you know, you have to hate your parents or your parents or brothers or sisters or anything. Yeah, the hate is actually written like by comparison of his love for me. He's actually trying to say that the priority that we give, the love, the, the priority of the love that we give to, 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 to God is, should, should, be the, should be the highest then compared to the love that you have for your uh, family members. Of course, God is the God who says that we should love everyone. So he's not saying that we should hate our parents or anything, but he wants us to love God at top priority and rest. Everyone should be on the second priority. That is what he exactly means. So... Uh, though sometimes, you know, uh, we need to understand that to become a disciple of God is not an easy thing. So, so many Christians, they said, I am a disciple of God. But being a Christian is different. Being a disciple is totally different. Because for being a di disciple, you have to sacrifice a lot. You have to pay a hefty price to, uh, uh, to be a disciple of God. That's what we see here. You have to, pay, you have to uh, leave everyone, everything else. You should not love yourself or you should, you know, you should not give more importance to any of the things of this world, but you should give the top priority to God in order to become his disciple. So we know that, you know, uh, anything that we pay more price, we, uh, we, we try to stay on to that. You know, if you buy something with a, with a, with a, with a, with a costly price, we buy something and pay a hefty price to that, we try to keep it for a long time. If you, if you get something for free, you know, if we take it for granted and, we you know, we just throw it off. So that is the human tendency. That is why God needs us to pay a hefty price to be his follower. That means if you are a follower of Christ or if you are a disciple of Christ, it means you are literally seriously, you are being a disciple because you are going to pay a hefty cost. And you cannot just, you know, come back at one point of time and say that, you know, I don't want to be a, continue to be a disciple. So because you're paying a hefty price, to we'll make sure that you stay on, on the same course and continue to be a disciple of God. And that's why, you know, when we see that the salvation is free, that is the reason we see that so many people who come into the saving knowledge for the first few weeks, they are so, you know, they are so interested in everything. But after, you know, after years, you know, they just go back and they just backslide and everything because they know they are not paying any price for salvation because all the price is paid by God on the cross of Calvary. So they take it for granted. That is the reason why we see you no know, people you know, get back. But in the, in the case of discipleship, when you want to become a follower of Christ, you're paying a hefty price for that. So, you know, at any cost, you will not, you know, step back. You know, you will think twice or thrice before stepping back from his discipleship, you know, that opportunity or the privilege that you have. Then uh, moving on, uh, then again, we know uh, one more thing that it says in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, it says that you cannot serve two masters at the same time. Either you will love one and you will despise the other. So that is the reason why God says that you 
you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be my disciple, then give the topmost prayer to me and love me the most. So it's obviously, you know, for example, if you get the two offers from two companies, like say for Facebook and uh, and uh, and Microsoft, both the companies are good companies, and you will definitely love to get placed in both the companies. But you know, uh, ultimately you have to choose in any one of those offers. So obviously you select one and you will reject the other. So if you reject the other, that doesn't mean that you don't like that company. You like it, but still you give more priority to the one which you like the most. So that is what God expects us uh, to do. You have to love him the most when you try to be his disciple. And then let's move on to uh, see uh, uh, the other factors, some of the mistakes that we commit as, a, you know, the, uh, as we commit in as being a disciple. And before that, I want to ask you a question, like, you know, as we are not looking into anyone's life from the scriptures, as we are looking into our own lives, we just, I just want to ask you a question, like, are we really a good disciple of God? Because we know that we are disciples because we are learners, we are learning from the scriptures, we can call ourselves as disciples. So are we a good disciple in the presence of God? Do we give the topmost priority to God? You know, sometimes it's really hard to say that, you know, uh, sometimes uh, we neglect uh, the God's uh, work and things like that to, to you know, in, to, to take, care, take care of our family or take care of our business or, you know, to do some maintenance work at home. You know, we should neglect some meetings and things like that. You know, I've done that so many times. I have not gone to uh, the Sunday worship, you know, uh, in order to study for my exams. I, I still regret for that, you know. And that is some of the time, you know, where I gave more importance to my studies or to my work or something instead of uh, giving importance to God. There are so many things, places where we are supposed to give importance to God. And at times, you know, we neglect those things. Uh, instead of that, we give importance to our family and instead uh, give importance to our work and property and so many other things. So this is one thing that we should always keep in our mind that God expects us to, you know, you know, love him more than anything, which means that we have to give the topmost priority to God in whatever we do. We have to say, we may have to sacrifice our family or our work or our studies or anything in order to be a good disciple of God. So by just, you know, evaluating ourselves, we can understand whether we are, you know, really a good disciple or not. Everyone has to, you know, evaluate uh, their, themselves, you know, everyone has different uh, lifestyle and things like that. So it is a, uh, it's the most uh, important thing for us to, you know, do to just self-examine ourselves to see as we are not looking into anyone's life, you know, from the scriptures. Then let's uh, see uh, some of the mistakes that disciples will commit in their uh, life, you know, as, as they go in this long journey. So to, uh, turn with me to uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 12 to 13. Revelation chapter 2, 12 to 13. Revelation 2, chapter 12 to 13. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the one who was the sharp two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. So this is when God addresses uh, uh, the, the, the church, in Pergamum, he's saying that two important words that he mentions that, that he's giving a testimony of the, the believers over there. He says that you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith. Holding fast his name and not denying, his, the, denying the faith that we have on him. That is two important things that we should keep in our mind as we try to be his disciple in that journey. Because there are so many times, you know, uh, we can do both of this. We can deny the name of God and we can... Uh, deny, we denounce the faith that we have in Christ. So usually, we can say as believers, we don't do that because we are not, you know, uh, we don't, we don't easily do that because we know the scriptures, everything well. So uh, we may not do that. But you know, there are uh, as long as we are in a good situation, we don't do that. But when we are put into a, a difficult situation, that is the time where you know our soul is really put into test. You know, that is the time where uh, we can. No, deny the name or deny the faith that we have in Christ. You know, for example, we don't have to search for any people from the scriptures and just look into the 12 disciples. The disciples which who, who Jesus chose are from different work backgrounds and who stayed along with him for a long time and who was who were learning a lot of things from Christ. See that, you know, Judas Iscariot, uh, when you talk about him, he said he is the one who betrayed Christ. And when you see Peter, uh, Simon Peter, we see that he said he, he loves God more than anyone else, but we see that he denied God three times. And again, if you look at all other uh, disciples, when God said, 
to stay awake and pray, we see that they all felt asleep. And God said that your, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. And we also see all of the disciples when Christ was uh, getting arrested, uh, the Roman soldiers, when he was trying to arrest uh, God, uh, Christ, we see that all the disciples, they scattered and they ran away for their life because they feared for their life, because they were giving more importance to their life, even though, even though they know that they should not supposed to give more importance to their life. When the Roman soldiers came, that is the moment, you know, that is the time of testing. When, when real situation happens in your life, that is the time where you can, you know, forsake God or you can, you know, deny your faith. We see all those disciples who worked with God, who, who have seen all the miracles that God has done, but yet at the time of uh, when, when the problems occur to them, especially when the Roman soldiers came, we see all of these guys scattered. And all the guys, when Peter, we look into Peter, we see he denied three times. Just because he feared for his soul, he feared for his life. So this is what even can happen with us. They were disciples and we were just Gentiles who got, you know, got uh, converted into uh, his children um, after, you know, getting saved. So there are so many chances that we can also commit the mistakes like what the mistakes that the disciples have committed. And again, God himself is telling that we are living in a world where Satan has made his throne. So God even knows that we are living in a, such a... A, a bad world where you know there are so many other factors surrounding us that we can that can tempt us you know to deny the faith or to deny his name for example if i say we all say that the higher officials they you know, take bribe to uh, get the things done and we are not supposed to blame them it is because of the position and the uh, privilege they have that gets them that persuades them to take bribe if today we don't have this position so we don't take bribe tomorrow they put us in the same position where we have the privilege to get bright, of course, we may do it because uh, everything depends upon the, the circumstances that are surrounding you. So we should always keep in mind as a disciple, we should always keep in mind to, you know, uh, keep the, continue the faith, uh, hold fast the faith that we have in Christ and, you know, should never uh, deny or denounce the name of God. And let's see that some of the ways, you know, how we uh, commit this mistake in our life. But some of the mistakes are committed, you know, we, even without our knowledge. Uh, first thing by not confessing our faith. The first mistake that we commit, you know, is by not confessing the faith. Uh, confessing the faith in the sense, you know, we doesn't try to, you know, identify ourselves outside as a Christian. So we read in the scriptures like this, whoever acknowledged me before the men, the son of God will also acknowledge him before the angel of God. He who disowns me before men will be disowned before angels of God. And we also read in one more uh, uh, portion like this, that he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me is scatters. So we can see that, you know, this sounds is something like, you know, not confessing your faith before others. You know, we try to be like, you know, gender, like to be uh, like totally neutral, you know, because we are living in a, a society where uh, all the companies, everything, they try to be neutral. When you go and apply for a company, we see that all the companies, they try to be gender neutral. They don't uh, care whether you are a male, female, or a trans, or they to be you know uh, neutral in religion also they don't care what religion you are they all you know try to be neutral even as believers or sometimes you know we when we go outside we uh, we don't like to show ourselves as christian you know we don't try to show the faith that we have in christ or anything like that. we just try to be neutral among the crowd sometimes it's totally difficult to find a christian outside because there are so many christians walking around outside but you know it's quite difficult to you know physically look at them and say that they are christians or not because there was a time uh, uh, in the olden times not the olden times just before the smartphone arrived, you know, people used to carry their Bible in their hand, they used to walk in the street. I've seen so many people, you know, back in Chennai, I've seen so many people walking with their Bible in their hand. You know, I feel so good when I see someone walking with the Bible, you know, I try to identify myself with them, you know, it so feels so good that, you know, in my locality, in our neighborhood, there are so many Christians. But they, uh, even if they have a bag, they don't carry it in the bag, they try to carry it in their hand, because they feel it's a privilege or like a pride to carry Bible in their hand. But today we know the generations have changed. We try to uh, put our Bible inside the smartphone and we put it inside the pocket. We don't even like to uh, carry the Bible anymore. And I don't know the reason why. Maybe it's uh, extra burden to carry it or not. I don't know. And even uh, we don't even if you have a car, we don't put a Bible on the top of the dashboard because I don't know. Maybe we feel like you know the mileage will be reduced because of the extra burden or something. But you know there was a time when people used to you know show themselves outside that you know. They're Christians, but today we don't, you know, try to identify ourselves as Christian. And we, when we get an opportunity to share the gospel with someone in our workplace, you know, we try to stay silent because, you know, it's not good to, you know, have an encounter with the gospel and things like that with our uh, colleagues. Sometimes they may, you know, they offend us. You know, sometimes we feel bad after sharing the gospel with them. So these are sometimes, you know, we are trying to, you know, 
not showing, uh, not confessing the faith that we have in Christ. This is also one of the ways in which we are indirectly, uh, indirectly we are disowning the faith that we have in Christ. It means it's not like a serious issue, but you know, as a, I, in the long run, uh, we are not trying to identify ourselves, you know, in in the public as we are not a, uh, as a Christian or something. You know, we are feeling shy to share the gospel with our friends or something like that. Uh, I remember one instance where uh, I was like uh, working, and we have uh, we are, I always have a habit of uh, listening to music at work. Uh, most of my friends they listen to music on earphones, but I don't like listening uh, music on earphones. But I used to hear it on my speaker. So uh, there was one time I was listening to a song, and the song was "Because He Lives." Uh, I can face tomorrow. This was a song going on in my phone, and uh, there was one guy roaming around uh, in my place. He came to me and asked, uh, "Are you are you playing the song?" I said, "Yeah, I'm playing the song." And he, he came to talk to me about the song, and we, we had an introduction, and we had a small talk. And I came to know that this was a Hindu guy from uh, North India. And he and his brother has got saved after hearing the gospel and something. And he was sharing his faith and everything with me. And he was trying uh, his level best to, you know, bring his mother and his father also into the saving knowledge. I was totally, you know, uh, surprised. You know, I, I never, I never know this guy who this guy is. I never got an opportunity to have a, a chat with this guy. But on that day, because of this music was playing on my phone, and I got an opportunity to meet this guy. There were two brothers, and I was quite happy to uh, talk to them. And they were telling so many things from the scriptures. At one point of time, I felt bad about myself that, you know, they were quoting so many things from the scriptures and I was not in a position to quote so many things from the scripture. I felt bad, but, you know, I was really happy for the knowledge they have in the uh, in the scriptures. And there was one more uh, Catholic guy working in my place, so I called that guy also. And I uh, I just want to make sure the guy has, uh, has, has been really well saved and he has got the right gospel and uh, he has heard the right gospel and things like that. So once again, I shared the gospel with them so I thought, if I am, anyway, I'm sharing the gospel. So why should I uh, waste my opportunity? I called the another guy who was working there, a Catholic guy, and I shared the gospel also with him. And uh, I was quite happy for him. So these are some of the times, you know, even without our knowledge, we can come encounter some uh, things like that where we have an opportunity to uh, uh, share uh, gospel. But it's not highly recommended to play music because that is against the company policy. And uh, moving on. One more way we can, you know, uh, deny the faith and name of God. That is through false doctrines. So, because uh, there is, uh, you know, we have when you are learning the scriptures, we have to learn it in the exact proper way. Because as John C. Brother was saying that we have to learn the things in the right proper way, and the doctrine has to be conveyed in the right way. Because if we believe in uh, something God did not teach, or and we did not believe in something that God did teach, in either case, we are committing a false doctrine. And if you're committing a false doctrine, then we are actually uh, going against the faith, and we are actually denying His name. So this is also one, some of the mistakes that we can make, you know, even without our knowledge as a disciple. So whenever we read the scriptures, we have to make sure that we read it properly. If you don't know what we are reading, then we can get guidance from others or uh, from uh, commentaries and things like that. The point is that we have to learn it properly. So by, by learning the false doctrines, there are chances that we can deny our faith. And moving on, there's one more way we can deny our faith and name is by uh, living an unholy life. That happens, you know. Uh, we cannot even uh, predict how uh, unholy living can happen in the life of a believer. So, in connection to that, uh, just turn with me to First uh, Timothy chapter five, verse eight. And Apostle Paul says that if anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for his immediate family, he has denied his faith and worse than an unbeliever. So, there are so many ways we can commit, you know, unholy actions in our life. This is one of the way that. Uh, Apostle Paul is mentioning Timothy that uh, if you don't care for your own family members or for your relatives, then you are actually denying your faith. And your situation is even worse than an unbeliever. That is more pathetic at all at the end, you know. So there are so many ways that we can uh, live an unholy life. Only we know what type of unholy things we do. So if we live an unholy life and if we claim ourselves to be a disciple of God, then it's totally wrong. We are actually denying our faith, which is totally not right. And we are not a good be a disciple of God. So we need to examine our lives and find out where we are lacking, what type of life we are uh, living. As I said, you know, uh, not confessing uh, your faith and uh, uh, learning false doctrines and uh, living an unholy life, all these things can, you know, uh, without our knowledge, they will persuade us to, you know, deny the faith and uh, uh, deny the name of the Lord, you know. These are some of the things that uh, can happen in our life, so we have to be really aware about that. And then moving on, uh, let's see what it takes to be a good disciple. See, see, just attending the church meetings or uh, all the Bible studies or taking part in the communion or uh, doing some charities and doing being so religious uh, doesn't mean that you are a disciple of God. You can, because all the Christians do this. And again, doing all this doesn't mean that you are a true Christian. 
but also there, there are so many other things you have to consider so if you want to be a true disciple of god it really takes a a a a a cost in your life that is what we read in uh, in the scriptures so today now we are going to just look into uh, the various things that is required to be a good disciple we are going to compare it with the various scripture portions and we are going to take that as guidelines and to revive or to uh, to just evaluate our life and see what is our position in our uh, discipleship or what type of disciple we are so moving on uh, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to uh, matthew Matthew 4:18-19. You don't have to take it. It's a very familiar portion. Matthew 4:18-19. And Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he called Simon Peter and Andrew to leave their occupation as fishermen and follow him. Their response to call is what actually you know makes me uh, you know that that their response is what actually makes them the true disciples. See here, it says that they immediately left their left their net and they followed him. So this is what the commitment Lord requests from us to be His disciple. you know it's not like you know you do something you know part time uh, believers or like you know doing secondary you know that you are a, uh, you, you you may be a christian you may be a believer you are a uh, disciple if you want to be a disciple you have to go away whatever you are doing and you have to you know come full commitment is what god is expecting out of us and that is what do we saw here with with peter and andrew they just left they were fishermen by profession they left their profession they left their net and they just left everything and they just followed god this is the level of commitment what is god is expecting out of a believer in order to be a, a um, disciple so we are going to look into some of the uh, factors uh, and we are going to compare that factors with the guidelines given in the scriptures to see uh, uh, what it really requires to be a good disciple so first thing is the born again experience that is a very basic criteria to be a disciple the born again experience so we need to accept our, ourselves that we need to accept the fact that we were sinners and we need to accept christ as our personal savior we have to accept him as our master we have to accept him as our leader whatever it is we need to accept him as our head and then that is the starting point where you can you know think of being a disciple of god you know because uh, we are supposed to submit ourselves completely to our master only then you know we can learn so many things from him you know we should not in a parallelly uh, learn our own things and then learn something from god it's not the way it works we have to completely submit to him and we have to completely learn other things from god when he teaches we have to learn from him this is one of the most important uh, criteria to uh, the basic criteria to become a good disciple then moving on uh, the second thing that it takes to be a good disciple is prayer you know in luke chapter 6 verse 12 we read about that luke chapter 6 verse 12 it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray and he went the and he spent the whole night in prayer to god you see a god that is spending a whole night in prayer and when we try to follow god we have to have the same experience in our life we should spend more time in the presence of god uh, in prayer because that is the way we can communicate with god and that is what it is accepted uh, from a uh, from a, a disciple so we spend some time for our uh, you know uh, prayer to just uh, get our needs or to meet our uh, requirements that is not enough but you have to spend uh, Uh, you should start your day end your day in prayer and you should spend so much time in prayer and we can just uh, uh look into our lives and we can evaluate it how much time you are spending in the presence of god so if you are able to spend more time in the presence of god we can know that we are trying to be a good disciple to god and uh, we also know that you know anyone who is a disciple of god he should be a person of prayer and uh, as i was talking about this i was just reminded of one thing that you know whenever we used to uh, provide offerings uh, to the church uh, we provide offerings to meet the expenses of the church and the rest of the surplus amounts goes to various evangelists working in different parts of the country okay that's fine but do we ever uh, take the burden to uh, uh, to inquire to who this money is going and how what is the progress of their uh, ministry they are doing or do we really commit those things in our daily prayers that is what is really important you know of course it is important to uh, give our offerings to god but the most important thing is that we should have a closed feedback we should know who whom we are supporting and we should know a uh, complete status of what ministry they are doing what are the difficulties they are facing and we should commit those matters in our daily prayer if you are able to commit all these matters of course i believe the prayer time would be more than half an hour or more than one hour we may be forced to spend more time in prayer because you know it's not just uh, we give the support and we leave it but it is our responsibility to pray and commit them and their ministry in our hands because it was a practice in my assembly back we keep a register where uh, there was like 150 200 people 
uh, it was updated uh, every we every month you know and we used to pray like 10 people uh, every people used to pray for 10 or 20 people according to the number of people they gathered in the prayer meeting so you know we we, feel, we get a complete idea of what ministry they are doing and how much progress they are making what are the difficulties they are facing so every day as you pray for them their difficulties becomes our difficulty you know uh, we feel like you know we are in a comfort zone and we are just providing the support but these people are working in the uh, in, in, in the in the public places and they are getting a lot of oppositions and they are facing so many difficulties in their life they are sacrificing their own life to 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 to, to preach the gospel to the people you know and we are here living a comfortable life so when we start praying for them you know we feel like you know that burden will be there in our heart and it may be persuading us to spend more time in prayer with god and then moving on the next uh, criteria that is required is to be a good listener you have to listen to what god is telling to you uh, turn with me to matthew chapter 17 verse 5 Matthew chapter 17 verse 5 while he was still speaking a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud said this is my beloved son with whom i am well pleased listen to him so it is always quite important as a disciple to listen to him every morning we start we think of so many things that we have to do on that particular day and we are much worried about so many things but as a disciple we have to first search god in prayer and we have to listen what is the god's plan for that for that day for us we have to uh, look for his will we have to listen what god is talking to us you know what is the will for uh, will of god in our life on that particular day instead of uh, relying upon our own strength or upon our own wisdom it is better to rely upon god's wisdom and uh, do the things what god actually wants us to do and to do this we need to again we need to spend more time in prayer we need to read the scriptures maybe at the time we read the scriptures god may be conveying some message or we may be conveying his will to us through his uh, through the scripture or through the prayer that we make so it is also one of the most important uh, uh, character uh, a disciple should have listen to god uh, after praying you should listen to god and next moving on the belief we should always have the belief in our god and that we can read in john chapter 3 verse 16 it's a very familiar verse that you know uh, for whosoever loved the uh, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life this belief should not end after getting salvation this belief should continue even after our salvation you know we should not uh, put we should not put our trust in anything else or we should not put our trust in ourselves we should always try to believe and we have faith and our hope and our trust everything should be in uh, in christ and this is what is quite uh, expected out of a good disciple uh, according to uh, the scriptures uh, uh, and uh, according to god and moving on uh, one of the most important thing uh, to uh, be a good disciple is obedience uh, that we can learn in john chapter 8 verse 12 john chapter 8 verse 12 i am the light of the world he who follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life so he who uh, so he who follows me so what does it mean to follow god follow god means you are actually trying to obey him you're walking in obedience with god because there's a song which says trust and obey for there's no other way so the same thing applies for a, a disciple if you want to uh, be a good disciple uh, in your christian life then you have to obey the commandments and the the will uh, what will of god in your day to day life you cannot uh, think uh, or lay upon any of your knowledge or things like that for because every good thing we know that for every good thing good comes from our lord and he is the source of every good thing so it's not uh, nothing bad for us you know completely rely upon him and obey each and everything uh, that we do because uh, today we know the obedience is one of the biggest factor that is missing in so many places because this is obedience there are so many problems arising so if you want to really be a good disciple then we have to make sure we obey god and uh, we obey his commandments so that is also one of the important criteria then moving on uh, this is also one of the important thing that a, a disciple should know that is love Uh, turn with me to Mark chapter twelve verse twenty. Uh, here God is talking about the wholehearted love. Love. Uh, Mark twelve verse thirty. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and you will all, and will and with all your strength. So He is talking about uh, loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So we can see that one word is being repeated every every every, every time in this word. That is all. so god wants us to love him wholeheartedly because he doesn't want half love because there are times we try to you know love god and we love the world at the same time this divided heart is not what god is expecting out of a believer and as well as out of a disciple 
So when we try to be a good disciple, we have to make sure that we are completely loving him. That is why he stresses upon that word all, you know, all the three times, all, all, all. It's because we have to completely love him and we should not leave any space in our heart to love anything else of this world. Because if you love anything else of the world, anything else of this world, obviously our decisions and our uh, actions, everything would be biased. So because when you completely put your love upon Christ, upon God, then this can have a great impact in our uh, life and the way we uh, make our decisions, the way the actions that we do, the places we go, the things that we do, everything can have a change in our life. You know, everything will uh, have a change because our love is on the Christ. It's because of where your heart is, that is where your actions, everything would be there. That is what we read in the scripture. So it is quite important to love God wholeheartedly. And that is one of the most important criteria of what God expects out of a believer. And uh, then moving on, it's about sharing, sharing the good news, sharing the truth, what you have, uh, uh, what you have gained from, uh, from, from, from others. Because at one point of time, we were Gentiles and somehow we got, uh, we came to the saving knowledge and now we are the disciple and now it is our responsibility to share the same truth with others. And that we can read in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19 goes like this. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. So God wants us to, uh, to, to go forward. You know, as I told you already, you know, we have to go forward and whether we feel shy or not, what the people, other people think, it's not should be a matter of concern to us, but we have to uh, share the joy, what we are experiencing in our life, the, 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 the truth through which we got this privilege and uh, discipleship, what we are enjoying, we should try to make more disciples for the Lord and we should try to bring more followers to the Lord. This is also one of the, uh, uh, maybe we can consider this as one of the responsibility of a believer, but if you are doing it properly, then we can know that we are uh, trying to be a good disciple to God. Then uh, moving on, the next thing is service to God. If you are a good disciple, it is necessary that you have to serve the Lord. Uh, that we can read in John 12, chapter 26. John 12, chapter 26. So I'm just reading so many verses because I'm just uh, taking this verses as the guidelines to compare because I'm not taking looking into anyone's life from the scripture. So I'm just taking the uh, scripture verses as guidelines. So it says in John 12, verse 26, it says that if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. And if anyone serves me, the father will honor him. So uh, we know that God came to this world as a servant and he served us and he, and he sought us and he saved us. So as a disciple of God, when we are following him, when we try to be like him, we should also try to serve God and to serve the community to whatever we are doing. You know, that is what we know because every believer is uh, given with some sort of a talent and skills. We cannot say that uh, uh, I don't have this skill, I don't have that skill. Everyone is given with some sort of, God has blessed everyone with uh, some skills. Some may be good in speaking, some may be uh, good in singing, some may be good in taking care of the administrative work, some may be uh, good in uh, sharing the gospel and evangelism and so many things. So whatever uh, uh, talent God has given to us, we have to make sure we are using that to the maximum because God expects that from us. That is what we read. Uh, anyone, the Father will honor him. If, if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. In order to get the honor, we, of course, we have to spend time uh, in serving God in whatever uh, capacity we have, we have to serve God. And moving on, the last, which is suffering. If you want to be a disciple, it is not a life. It comes with a lot of suffering. Uh, we read in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 about that. For to you, it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake but also to suffer for his sake. So if you are a disciple of God, it is sure that you're going to have a bad time in your life because you may have a financial losses, you may have broken relationship, you may face so many difficulties because we are living in a world uh, which, which, which is totally different from what we are living because our love is upon God, but the world loves worldly things. So when you get into their boundary, of course, we are going to face, you know, there will be, there's no equilibrium in that place. We are going to face some sort of difficulties and problems in this world because our love is totally upon God and the people of this world, they are doing all the worldly things. And when we go out, share the love of God and things like that, we are going to face persecution. We are going to face oppositions. We are going to face, you know, uh, we are going to be manhandled. There are so many things that can happen to us. So, because the love is totally different. So, when you decide to be, the disciple, as we said, it really takes a huge cost, and this is what the real cost is. 
So you have to sacrifice so many things. You should give top priority to God. You should, you know, leave your family and your property, everything back. And you have to give the top most priority to God. And then again, after you becoming a disciple, when you are, as you go through this journey, there are so many chances that you can get so many suffering. So you should be ready to take up all this before, you know, desiring to be a disciple. It's not easy to say that uh, I can be a disciple. You can be a believer. There's no problem. You can be a child of God. There's no problem. But if you want to be a disciple of God, it is really a, a, a difficult task and it uh, it takes a huge cost on you and uh, you may have to suffer sufferings. There are so many things. So whenever we make a decision in our life to be a disciple or when we evaluate our life and we find, is there anything lacking based on these points or based on the scripture guidance, we need to work on those areas in order to make ourselves, you know, a better disciple because we don't have an idea about what others are doing. We are not here to judge others because we have to judge ourselves. And you have to see uh, what type of uh, disciple we are and how good we are to God. Because God wants us to follow him and we, he wants us to live like him. That is what he, he actually likes. So when we have to live like him, we have to exactly follow what God did. He, he, during his ministry in this world, uh, we see the various ways. He lived just uh, like a normal people like us and yet he was successful in a spiritual life. So as we live in this world where God itself has said that this is the place where the Satan dwells and this is his throne. So, of course, we know there are so many difficulties we have to face. So, uh, we have to uh, keep all these things in our mind uh, and we have to work accordingly. And the last thing is, uh, what I'm going to say is that the, 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 the responsibilities of, uh, uh, of being a believer, the one of the, there are so many responsibilities that you have uh, being a, a disciple. Uh, one of the most important is disciple making. So, as you are a disciple, you have to make sure that you spend time. Uh, to disciple making is not an easy uh, process. Actually, you have to spend time, a lot of time. You have to leave a lot of time from your uh, regular schedule and you have to allow time to uh, make the disciples because uh, it takes a lot of time and efforts. And uh, then uh, we also know that uh, we have to encounter with people and uh, we should share the gospel. And for to do this, we should have a proper knowledge of uh, the scriptures. Like the incident I, as I told, when that guy, the, the guy who converted from Hindu, when he was quoting so many portions and he was talking about how the Christianity evolved and things like that, uh, I was totally having no idea about all this. And I really felt bad about myself because I was not having enough words on the scriptures to, you know, you know, to, to support him. So it's very important that we learn the scriptures properly and we should have more knowledge when we go outside and talk to people because the people can ask so many questions. Easy, it's easy to answer, uh, ask questions, but it is quite difficult to replay all these questions. So we have to spend more time reading the scriptures and in order to fulfill our responsibility as a disciple to make more disciples. And then, and again, it needs so many follow-up meetings with the people with whom we are met because just talking to them once is not going to work in their mind. Maybe we have to talk to them several times. We have to go behind them. We have to have a contact with them and we have to have so many follow-up meetings with them in order to bring them to the saving knowledge. You know. The growth of the assembly is not uh, calculated based on the number of believers being added into the assemblies because, you know, there are so many believers getting transferred because of their work. There are a lot of immigrants coming from one country to the other country. When the, the already, the believers, when they come and join one more assembly, it is not actually considered to be a growth. It's just like believers joining another church. It's nothing uh, great. But uh, the real thing, uh, the real importance, uh, the real uh, harvest is made when Unbelievers are added to the assembly. So this is where the area where we have to really work upon. As we call ourselves as disciples, as we call ourselves as learners, we have to uh, follow the commandments that God has given us to uh, make more disciples for him and make followers for him. So our uh, primary aim should be to bring more unbelievers into the assemblies and make them believers and make them the followers. Uh, that is what the real growth of assembly uh, is all about. So let us uh, work hard because now right now we know that the situation is not good. There are a lot of doors which have been closed. So many people have been affected because of the pandemic. But I believe that there is a day that's going to come where uh, all these things would be uh, be removed by God and there will be a time for us to make a better harvest in the coming days. We as a disciple, it is our primary responsibility to make more disciples. And as I said, there will be more opportunities for the, us in the coming days because it's quite easy, I believe, to make people understand because now they know what is the importance of gospel and they know when to take the decision because whenever when you... Uh, encounter people with the have a discussion with them and when you talk share with the gospel the first thing they will say that of course i believe everything but i'll take the decision later because they don't want to come into a commitment with god because they know it's not easy they say that we'll take a decision in a later point of time and we can never find that person again 
but now we people know that there is no uh, later time whatever this has to be made has to be made right now so i think the things would be uh, more supportive for us in the coming days so let us uh, keep this things in our mind let the words that god has given to us let it work in our mind and wherever we lack let us evaluate ourselves and let us uh, uh, try to rectify those areas and uh, let us try to grow more closer to god and let us all try to be a better uh, and a good uh, disciple of god bringing glory to 